All right, so time for time for inkling, inkling matchup chart. Uh, and I'll say from the start, a few characters uh, I probably won't uh, rank, and we'll put them in not sure, just because like every every matchup in this game I haven't really gotten to play. I I actually think it's a few matchups I haven't played at all as inkling, just because some characters are really uncommon. Uh, so yeah, just letting you guys know in advance uh, that some of these characters do exist. Uh, but yeah, I'll start. I'll start with putting Inkling up here, of course. Uh, we can start putting uh, start putting Echoes like true like yeah. If it's cl close enough, I'll put I'll put echoes down here. Uh. Yeah. Close enough, close enough. I'll say the Mies I have not been fighting enough. So those we can already, already put down there. Um, what else? Oh yeah, one of the Belmonts we can put down here just to like remove some from the list. Let's get started. Oh yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true. Uh, all right, let's get started. Um, we can start. We can start with this tier. Uh, clearly winning for Inkling. Uh, once again, Little Mac. Little Mac is gonna make it down here. I, I, I guess a lot of characters just have a clearly winning matchup against this character. Play lame against him. Get him off stage and. Yeah, it, it's a reason. It's a reason why he's arguably and most likely the worst, worst character in the game. Uh, don't really cheat, see that changing. Uh, also, clearly winning, I feel like Inkling against quite a few of the heavy characters have a clear advantage. Some of these matchups in clear winning doesn't mean like it's unwinnable, uh, but it's like it, you're gonna have a rough time against Inkling if I put you in this tier. Uh, Ridley also uh, gets down there. Uh, have a lot of weaknesses that Inkling can capitalize good on. Uh, he's big, so he's a big target. Uh, while Inkling is, you know, pretty small, uh, especially hurt box when you're like uh, dash dancing and stuff. So it can be hard for Ridley to uh, to land hits on you. Upper upper percentage is also really really big against Ridley, so that's uh, nice. You get reliable kills. You don't really need to rely on Roller because it's like a 25%-ish window against Ridley, uh, give or take a little bit based on if you know you have Rage or not. Uh, so yeah, when I'm playing against Ridley, I always feel like it's a clear, clear advantage, uh, clear advantage for Inkling. Uh, same thing with King K. Rool. Uh, a little bit the same thing as Ridley. Uh, big targets, easy to combo. His recovery is not as good as people, you know, thought at the start. And just a lot of like pretty, pretty slow, laggy moves. You can actually dash under uh, the cannonball from uh, King K. Rool as well. Uh, so once people get more used to that, that's gonna you know make that move significantly worse uh, on relatively close range. Uh, so yeah, Kinky Rule also probably gonna have uh, quite a few matchups where he's like you know just losing, uh, losing by a lot. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Kinky Rule, good online. Yeah, because people can't like accordingly punish because of, you know, random lag. 
Uh, what else do we have? Um, I will admit and say I haven't played this matchup too much, but it does feel like it's pretty clear inkling. Huge thing is that you used to have like a lot of a lot of lag on many moves with Piranha Plant, and that's something Inkling can capitalize well on. Uh, a lot of p people talk about how with punishing is not really in this game for many characters. I feel like Inkling is one of the few characters that have relatively okay with punishing uh, due to good dash and a quick jab as well. Uh, yo, Anish, thank you for the prime, buddy. Welcome to Brotherhood. Uh, but yeah, so Piranha Plant having quite a few uh, like laggy moves uh, means good time for Inkling to get in. Uh, so it does feel pretty good in my opinion uh, against Piranha Plant. But I, I will say that I haven't played this matchup as much as like these two, for example. So I'm open to the idea that this might not be as bad as I currently think uh, because it's little experience, but I still felt like it was like enough to at least at least give it a try to rank it. Uh, I also feel like he's Piranha Plant overall. He almost feels like a Smash 4 character in Ultimate. Yo, Matt, thank you for 25 months. Oh, it's your uh, your birthday? Happy birthday, Matt. Hope you have a good one. Uh, but yeah, as I said, Piranha Plant, he kind of feels like a, a Smash 4 character in Ultimate with so much lag on so many of his moves uh so i hope i hope to at the very least uh, fix some of these uh these moves uh, for a piranha plant uh what else do we have uh, this matchup i haven't played uh too much either but i feel like enough to rank it i feel like inkling wins clearly against uh, Zelda as well uh, Roller actually is surprisingly, surprisingly good in this one. And even before people are like, Roller, amazing. Like, I know it's an amazing move, but I didn't expect it to work as good against, uh, uh, what's the move called? Phantom with Zelda. Uh, it actually works really good in that matchup where you can just like go through uh, the Phantom and then ground your Zelda. So that's a huge thing for sure. Uh, Zelda overall is a pretty weak character as well. Uh, so normally these type of characters tend to do, you know, worse against uh, good, good characters. It is some exceptions, of course, but yeah, traditionally bad characters tend to end up, end up in like these ranges with some exceptions, of course. Uh, what else do we have? Uh, Incineroar, I also feel like he's uh, pretty clearly Inkling. Uh, he... Yeah, falls a little bit under the same category as Ridley and King Kiro. Big target, gets comboed easily. Bad offstage, bad offstage. Uh, he did get a buff on his recovery, but the concept is still very similar. Be having him offstage might be death, and with Inkling being so good offstage, uh, it's it's a tricky time for Incineroar. Might, might climb up to this uh, tier in the future, but... I don't see Incineroar climbing higher than this on the matchup chart in its current state. Uh, uh, what else do we have? Uh, all right, we're gonna leave this category for now. We might end up putting some more character here. Uh, we might put some more character here. Uh, <sighs> Let's see. All right. Yeah, winning matchups. I'll say Mewtwo. Also, these characters within the tiers are not put in order. They're not put in order. So, I'll always say that. Like, yeah. Uh, Mewtwo, I feel like, uh, struggles quite a bit with Inkling. Uh, huge window for up for up air. Uh, hard time getting out of disadvantage. Uh, when I'm playing against like, some Mewtwo's, it just clearly, clearly feels 
like uh, Inkling's advantage states is too good and despite Mewtwo being really light you still have upper upper working forever which is really big in a game where even though edge guarding is stronger it's not as as strong you know as in melee for example uh, so Mewtwo's overall weaknesses as a character gets kind of like pushed against Inkling uh, So yeah, Mewtwo, Mewtwo will be put in the winning category for now. Uh, what else? Uh, I feel like Marf, Marf is gonna end up here as well. Uh, it's not, it's not too bad for Marf though. Uh, I could see him go to sl uh, slightly winning for Inkling in the future. Uh, but compared to Lucina, struggles much more to get kills. His neutral, his neutral is still fine though. Uh, He's still good at taking advantage of Inkling, like being ab above, for example. Uh, one of the better characters at having a chance to edge guard. Uh, so, yeah, it's still it's still winning for Inkling, though. Uh, I feel like a lot of Inkling players probably stay a little bit too much in the air um, against. Too many Inklings, I think, stay in the air too much against sword characters. Uh, I think a grounded style. The more I play against sword characters, the more I feel like being on the ground and try to punish them as they come down uh, actually works uh, better than most people seem to think. Oh, for, yeah, okay, for the people, who don't, maybe I should have typed out, like, numbers or something instead, but, yeah, to put it simple, in case someone misunderstood so far, losing means losing for Inkling, slightly losing means slightly losing for Inkling, even, of course even, and then slightly winning is for Inkling, winning is for Inkling, and clearly winning is for Inkling. Uh, just to make sure that it's cleared up. Uh... Kirby, Kirby winning. Uh, honestly, with like a lot of these bad characters, I just feel like they don't really have the tools to uh, keep up with the top tiers. Uh, like, I, I don't really see what Kirby Kirby have in this matchup to push it like better than this. He's just like pretty bad character overall. Uh, he probably both Kirby and Puff probably does like slightly bit better. Uh, than I than I originally thought, but overall, overall, not too good of characters. Uh, they can still do some damage off stage sometimes, but they just lose in pretty much pr pretty much every area. I don't really see them being better in any area uh, than Inkling when they fight head to head. So it just kind of snowballs. Uh, C9 Red, thank you for the two months. Mm. Yeah, Belmont, Belmont winning for Inkling as well. Uh, this character, these these characters like the Belmonts, they do capitalize more against slower characters, big targets. Uh, a lot of the hitboxes are very precise with like their aerials and stuff, for example. Uh, Wait, uh, Honeybee, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? But yeah, so yeah, as I said, Inkling is Belmont's. Uh, they do require a lot of precision with their stuff. Inkling, uh, huge huge advantage with dashing under stuff. You can dash under the F-Tilt, for example. Uh, also, they're weak off stage, strong area for Inkling, good punish game. Uh, they can be annoying to get in against, but I feel like that's... Uh, 
I feel like that's every, every, uh, every character. It can be annoying to get in against them, but Inkling have better tools to get in than most characters. Uh, push their disadvantage harder than most characters. So, yeah. Winning matchup for Inkling against uh, the Belmonts. Uh, Cloud, I would say, is uh, winning for Inkling 2. Uh, pretty good up for upper window here as well, which is nice. Uh, 2 framing is uh, pretty easy against Cloud, uh, which makes it very rough. One of the, th one of the things that makes uh, Cloud not amazing, I would say, uh, among other things as well, he do struggle to kill a little bit as well, which is obviously bad. It's like feels like Inkling does relatively well against most sword characters, and Cloud doesn't really have anything that makes him outstanding as a sword character compared to other sword characters. So he still have like the disadvantages of many sword fighters against Inkling, while not really having anything exceptional uh, either. Uh, but yeah, main things, main things being weak off stage, good area for Inkling. Uh, easy to two frame, good for inkling, especially because uh, down tilt is very good uh, to two frame people with. Uh, I could see down throw nair follow ups probably being pretty strong against Cloud as well due to his relatively weak recovery, unless you have limit. But it's not like you're gonna have that at all time. Uh. Isabel. I haven't played this matchup too much, but a little bit. Uh, it, it feels like a little bit like, you know, Kirby, uh, Puff and stuff. He's like not a very amazing character by any any means. Uh, so you just get like outnumbered in multiple different areas. Uh, I guess like if you have never played against an Isabel before with like fishing rod and stuff like that might, you know, be a little bit annoying at first. But I don't really, I don't really see anything this character have to like make it very hard for Inkling by any means. So, yeah, Isabel will be here for now. Uh, DK winning matchup, uh, similar issues to Ridley, King Karul, Incineroar and so on, but it still feels like he has a much easier time landing hits, uh, landing combos than the other heavies that we have ranked so far. So even though it feels like a winning match of Franklin, clearly it doesn't feel as bad. Like he has a much, much easier time to get in, much easier time to actually land stuff compared to Ridley, King Karol and Incineroar. Uh, and also have an easier time killing, I feel like, than the other heavies. So Maybe, maybe could climb up to slight winning, but I currently don't think so. No. Uh, so yeah, DK, DK will be in the winning, winning area. Uh, Bowser as well, Bowser as well. As we already claimed, uh, similar issues to the other heavies. Uh, but easier time killing than these heavies in my experience. Uh, the fire can actually be really, really annoying at times as well, giving a lot of damage. Uh, but yeah, main thing, easier kills, easier kills than some of the other heavies. Uh, up out of shield can actually be surprisingly annoying as well. Ganon will end up here uh, as well. Uh, but I would say Ganon and DK. Ganon and DK are probably the two best heavies. It's... Ganon have surprisingly, surprisingly fast moves. Uh, I will admit that I probably underrated this character as a whole early on. Uh, he still have severe flaws though. Uh, I just feel like it's hard to design the heavy characters without making them really, really silly. Uh, he's really brutal in the sense where like one or two reads can get massive damage. Uh, his aerials and smash attacks are surprisingly uh, quick, really strong. 
Uh, but still like mainly from being big target, weak off stage. So, you know, rinse and repeat with the, you know, some of the issues with the character. Uh, but yeah, him and DK are probably the two best uh, heavies against Inkling, but Bowser, not, not, you know, far behind. I would still say these three are clearly, they feel clearly better against Inkling than the other three. Uh hmm. Samus, Samus feels like a winning matchup too. Uh Also not an amazing character uh, by any means. Uh, can struggle to kill. Uh, I don't know. I'm not really sure exactly how to explain this one. I, I, have, I haven't played too much against Samus's, but when I have done it, I don't really feel like Samus can like super, super punish Inkling for, for anything. Like many other matches, it feels least like Inkling is better in, you know, by far most areas. Uh, probably not anything crazy though. Probably not anything crazy. Uh, Krom, I would say, is a winning matchup. Uh, main thing here is Krom's weak, weak recovery. Uh, down smash can cover uh, Krom's up e to ledge uh, very nicely. You actually can time like Krom's up e like pretty much always to cover with down smash so that's huge down throw nair conversions to put him in you know dangerous position off stage uh will make it rough for him as well uh, but i really think like in order for inkling to win this matchup you need to have the edge guards unlock if you don't have them on lock it will probably seem much more even than it most likely actually is Oh, DDD, DDD also also winning. Uh, I will admit that I I suck at this matchup. Uh, I I feel very bad against DDD, but I think that's more my issue rather than like a matchup issue by any means. Because last time I played against DDD, I was like very bad at ledge trapping. For example, I was very bad at playing around ledge trapping. Uh, DDD survives to like two twenty, but some of these issues are, as I said, related to my weaknesses. I really don't see how DDD would like actually push this matchup to like even. He probably still does surprisingly well for being a heavy, but I feel like once once an inkling have ledge trap game on point, it's gonna be very hard for DDD to actually, you know, uh to get through that. Still the issue like not all the issues of the heavies. His recovery actually like it's much harder to like kill him off stage than the other heavies. So that's that's something that is clearly better for him than the other heavies, uh, in my experience. Uh, DDD is annoying for everyone. Yeah, I feel that too. I feel that too. Uh, Corin also winning matchup. Uh, a little bit too slow, a little bit too much lag, weak off stage, a little bit like Cloud, like, it's not a, an awful character by any means, but it's a game with many sword characters, and it's kind of like, why main Corrin? Uh, Inkling have, have an easier time getting in against Corrin than my experience than many other sword fighters, and then on top being weak off stage. Feels, feels like a winning matchup for sure for Inkling. And I did get to play against Cosmos, uh, Corrin, quite a bit too. And it really felt like Inkling has the advantage. And I did not even really have any Corrin experience prior to playing against him. I know it's a different game, but he did main Corrin in Smash 4. So obviously some of it will translate over to Ultimate. And it just entirely felt that, you know, Corrin did not have the tools to actually, like, have a winning matchup. I'm not saying it's impossible to win a set or anything because I don't think so. Uh, but it it felt like Inklings Inklings advantages was much higher uh, 
than Corrin's. Uh, like as an inkling main, I would rather fight like a Corrin or a Cloud, for example, than some of the other sword characters. Dr. Mario will end up in winning as well. Uh, pretty basic character all around. Uh, he does have some tools to make edge guarding surprisingly okay for him against Inkling. Uh, but overall, like way too basic. I feel like his punishes are not very strong. I feel like Mario is main, mainly because of his punish game much stronger than Dr. Mario in the matchup. Uh, feels like pretty long matches that kind of snowballs into Inkling's favor uh, overall. Probably it's going to be rougher for Dr. Mario once people get better off stage as well. Uh, but yeah, not anything crazy. It's just like, you know, matches that should snowball in Inkling's favor. Bad off stage, not too crazy punishes. He do, he do have surprisingly good kill power sometimes though. So it's not all bad. It's not all bad. Falcon, I would say winning matchup two. Uh, he's fast, which is pretty good, obviously. Inkling can be pretty weak uh, out of shield. So at least that's something, having a fast character, making it tricky for Inkling to act out of shield. Uh, so not all around bad. Uh, once again, weak off stage always going to be a huge problem against uh, good Inklings. Uh, I also feel like actually not only Falcon, a lot of characters just get comboed very hard by Inkling, assuming you have platform stages for follow-ups, which is something I'm going to go over in some future video, just like how to punish punish properly with Inkling to help you guys out. Uh, but yeah, if you do fight Falcon or any character with weak weak uh, recoveries, fly off stage, experiment in matches, clearly going to help you out long term. Oh, Pit, Pit winning matchup. Uh, overall issue with Pit, just being too mediocre in too many areas. Not anything the character is like truly, truly amazing at. Uh, I feel like Inkling is better in every area as a character, at least more or less. Uh, so it's like you have a fighting chance, of course, but everything Inkling wants to do is like a little bit better, a little bit, you know, a little bit more true. It's just like you don't really have anything to like truly win the matchup, I feel like. But once again, not impossible. Um, Zero Suit I see as a winning matchup. Uh, I'll admit it can be a little bit annoying. That's probably because I didn't really play Smash 4 much. And I do think Zero Suit have... Uh, or Zero Suit has been underrated. But... One of Zero Suit's main issues is hitting small characters. Uh, and I feel like Inkling is one of the characters that can capitalize the best on that. That you can sneak under a lot of moves. So that's the main reason why I see Inkling having uh, a winning matchup against Zero Suit. Uh, you need to be very precise, very precise to land uh, moves on Inkling in certain scenarios. So, main reason I think Zero Suit will have uh, a losing matchup against Inkling. So, winning matchup for Inkling. Uh, Ike feels like a winning matchup too. Uh, Pretty uh, pretty slow character. Overall, I will admit that e even when MKLeo won uh, 
Smash Conference, I think the tournament was called. Uh, that tournament early in the year when he won with Ike. I, I really did feel like that character is a little bit overrated, and I still stand by that. Uh, and I feel like he's a little bit too slow to actually uh, be able to push this matchup up to like an even matchup. Uh, a little bit too slow. I feel like he gets away too much with like a pretty linear recovery. People haven't learned like all the timings and setups uh, to kill him. Uh, he's still a pretty good character though. He's still a pretty good character, of course. But uh, yeah, a little bit too slow to uh, push it better, I feel like. Uh. Hmm. Tune Link, I would say winning matchup. Uh. Tune Link winning matchup also uh, pretty good for Inkling in terms of offstage. Uh. Like. I don't know, I feel like Inkling is stronger punishes, stronger offstage game, better time coming back to the stage. Neutral game, I would still say, is a slight Inkling. Uh, so it's not really any area where Toon Link actually outperforms Inkling either. So, yeah, winning matchup, winning matchup for Inkling, I feel like. Uh... Yeah, and as I said, some characters, some uh, some tiers we might go back to as well. Just trying to like reduce the character pool. Uh, slightly winning, uh, I would say. Wolf is slightly winning. Uh, one thing that's very nice in this matchup is that kills are more reliable than quite a few of the other good characters. Huge window for up for up air. Uh, Wolf's recovery not as bad as people say, but it's still a weakness of the character, so that's good for Inkling too. Uh, pretty easy to two frame, especially on the side B. Uh, Inkling is very good at two framing. Uh, I do think if Wolf plays more quote unquote lame, uh, I think the matchup is a little bit better for Wolf than some people might think. I think if they try to play a little bit too aggro, that's playing into Inkling's hands. Uh, I think playing a little bit more patience, a little bit more uh, lasers, especially if you have low damage, so you don't risk getting rollered. Uh, then the matchup is inkling favor, but not by like much. Uh, still probably one of Wolf's, you know, trickier matchups. Uh, but yeah, I personally, I personally like this matchup. It's fun, it's fun. And having more reliable kills feels good. Uh, what else? I feel like Snake, Snake is quite, uh, like, slight winning. I'll admit, a little bit like DDD, I feel like I'm not super good at this matchup, and I get punished a little bit too much for the same things. Uh, but overall, uh, Weaker off stage, Inkling can go very far off stage. Big target. Uh, Inkling is also pretty fast. Uh, have a higher chance of playing around some of you know like uh, the grenade stuff, all the projectiles. Uh, pretty big window for up for up air. Uh, but yeah, Snake. I, I will admit he's he's a little bit better than I thought initially. But I feel like Snake is one of these characters that have like. A few characters that could be could be a little bit rough for him, and I do feel like Inkling, Inkling long term will have the advantage in the matchup at the very least. Sakurai, please buff Kirby, please no. As I said in my tier list video, he gotta pay for his sins from sixty four. Uh. Young Link, I would say, is a slight winning. Uh, Young, Link's, Young Link's speed overall actually makes me think that he might have uh, an edge in neutral uh, against Inkling. Uh, 
a lot of his moves have like literally no lag uh a lot of annoying as fuck 50 50 spot dodge mix-ups even even when it looks like they are doing a bad move on close range it's still like you gotta guess to get the punish and if you guess wrong you might get punished uh he clearly has the speed and the tools to deal with inkling in neutral the the biggest reason i put this one as a slightly winning for inkling is that inkling is much having a much better time in terms of edge guarding than Young Link has for Inkling. I know that's true for many matchups, but the thing is that Inkling has surprisingly good edge guarding against uh, Young Link's up B. This probably is true for more characters, but Inkling's fair, you straight up beat the up B. I feel like you don't even have to time it, which is a huge deal, actually. Uh, but it feels like slightly su superior neutral to Young Link. But I think the the edge guarding probably makes up for it. It probably makes up for it. Uh, you can probably also use like sometimes in close range like backer through uh, the boomerang, for example, stuff like that. Uh, but great speed, great frame data, annoying 50-50s. Uh, so yeah, slight winning inkling. Slight winning inkling. Greninja feels like slightly winning as well. Uh, I haven't played the matchup too much. I played it, okay, to be fair, I played it a, a bit early on, but it's like the week after the game came out when I Dungeon came over. Uh, but I did get to play against Plup's Greninja a little bit. I got to play against MK Leo's uh, Greninja a little bit. And the character is very good. Uh, and it's a pretty even ish matchup overall. Uh, but I feel like one, ma one area that might be underutilized right now is that you can actually relatively, relatively good edge guard Greninja. Probably better so than most people think. You also have pretty good lenient uh, upper, upper timings, which is nice. Uh, and like some of his moves, like fair and stuff, you can uh, not easily, but you can, you can clearly with punish them quite a bit as well, which is uh, pretty huge. Uh, I could see this matchup be pushed up to even though. But right now, uh, I do feel like Inkling have a slight edge. I feel like Mega Man is here as well. Not a matchup I have crazy much experience in, but I ha I've gotten to play against a few Mega Mans. Uh, two framing seems very, very easy. Uh, so that's a huge disadvantage since his recovery is already like kind of linear and bad. Uh, Pretty good upper upper as well. Good combos. Neutral neutral can be a little bit annoying at times, uh, but I don't think it it's it makes up for Inkling's stronger areas overall. Uh, but a little bit like Greninja, I could see this matchup be pushed up to even. Uh, but right now, right now when I play against Mega Man's, I feel like it's uh, slight advantage for Inkling. But Tendo, thank you for the sub, buddy. Welcome to the Brotherhood. Um, Mario, Mario SES, slight winning. I think Cosmos put this matchup as even, which I also could see. I was actually considering putting Mario at even, but in the end I decided to put him at slightly winning. Uh, I feel like in most areas, Inkling is better. Uh, Mario's punishes are actually really, really strong. And this is another character I feel like I probably underrated from the start of the game. Just because Mario is very... He's a very basic character. Uh, he, in some ways, he feels like a, a good pit. Where they are, like, you know, pretty good in most areas. But Mario is better in, like, quite a few of those areas but this matchup could be even he has stronger punishes on average than inkling do have neutral feels kind of even ish probably give a slight edge to inkling there but neutral kind of even ish uh mario on average have stronger combos but inkling is stronger when it comes to uh, off stage play uh inkling also yeah better ledge trapping which probably uh which probably uh gives inkling the favor in the matchup long term 
Inkling does not beat Greninja. I could see the matchup being even, but for now I put it as slightly winning. I don't think that's... I don't think that's, uh, how do you say, too crazy. A lot of these matchups can like switch a tier, clearly. A few of them that I haven't played a lot might be able to switch two tiers. Uh, but yeah, these are, these are my impressions at the moment. Uh, Ness, I would say, slightly winning. Uh, I think it's like that Ness's down smash is actually surprisingly, surprisingly good. You actually can't upbeat to ledge with Inkling, which is very unique because Inkling's recovery is really, really good. But I, I, it's one of Ness's smash attacks uh, that actually covers the entire ledge. So if you upbeat to the ledge, you get hit. And it actually kills pretty early as well. So, uh, so yeah, that, that's a huge thing. Inkling's recovery being much worse against Ness than, I guess, every character uh, in the game. Uh, so that's that's huge. That's like one of the main reasons, actually, that recovery is just so, so much worse uh, than you're used to, which is huge, which is huge. In many scenarios, you want to recover high against Ness. Or, if you can, be close to the ledge, so you can like jump an attack or air dodge to ledge. You normally don't want to go low and up to ledge. I, I, I've died too many times to that. Sometimes you m maybe can do a trick of like, making it look like you're gonna upbeat to ledge but you go pass and then land and you know splash them but i feel like that would probably be more of a gimmick but maybe could work as a mix-up oh uh, i would say roy slightly winning uh biggest reason roy does better than Krom is Better recovery. Uh, he's not gonna die off stage as much. O of course, still not a strong recovery, but I feel like once people get really good at edge guarding Krom, that's gonna be very rough. And the down from there conversions uh, puts Krom in a worse position than Roy as well. Uh, so yeah, I'll say slight, slight winning for Inkling. Roy does have really good kill power though, so can get very early kills. Inkling not a very heavy character by any means, so. Yeah, for now, I feel like slight winning for Inkling against Roy. Uh, feel like Palutina, probably slight winning as well. Uh, overall, a pretty evenish matchups. Uh, evenish matchup. Uh, yeah, no, I decided I decided not to like put any exact exact numbers uh, Mainly mainly is because I feel like everyone have different definitions of what the numbers represent So I just tested something different here uh, Like for some people when it comes to numbers it's like oh you win this many matches out of a hundred They for some people it's like some indication of like how easy or how hard it is. I, I don't know. I, I feel like I've just heard so many different explanations for what the numbers are supposed to represent. So I, I tested I tested to have uh, the shard like this this time around. Uh, but yeah, Palutina, Palutina uh, slightly, slightly winning. Uh, I would like to play this matchup a little bit more though. I did get to test uh, to play it against... Uh, the boss and Nairo at Summit, but I would still I would still like to test it a little bit more. Paltina also surprisingly good uh, edge guards. Paltina's nair works a little bit like Wario's down air, where it's very good to cover the upbeat to the ledge uh, because it stays out for so long. Uh, that's actually a, something Nairo was doing very well. So I had to like mix up my recoveries much more with like going high, for example, uh, which sometimes he baited out, of course, as well. Uh, Do we have anyone more? Anyone more that should be in slightly winning? Oh, I could see Link in this tier too. Maybe it's a little bit better for Inkling than I think, but 
it, right now it feels like in slightly winning as well. Compared to Young Link, he's trickier, trickier to edge card for sure. His up B protects him much better than Young Link's does, at least in my experience. Uh, so that's a huge thing. Bomb recoveries can help him a lot as well uh, to recover, so that's good. Uh, can kill relatively early. Like, he probably doesn't have as good of a neutral as Young Link does in the matchup, but he's, his flaws in the matchup are not as big either. So it's like, you don't get the same strengths, but not the same like weaknesses either in terms of like how strong and weak they are. Uh, all right let's uh, move over to even matchups for now and as i said some characters i won't rank most likely just due to like no experience whatsoever uh, i feel like shulk feels pretty even uh his uh his shield uh shield power escapes uh upper up air uh i'm pretty sure that roller up smash can also be uh, shielded out of which is pretty absurd uh which means that killing in this matchup can be tricky at times uh and then he always have the threat of uh the the killing power that kills absurdly early really good ledge trapping uh, overall i just feel like this character have like a lot of potential i know it's a, like a little bit uh a little bit of a meme, chalk potential, blah blah blah. But I feel like this character actually could be could be pushed. It's just like more complicated character than, than arguably any character in the game because you have to work out so many different scenarios with each one of the each one of his uh, power ups. And shield art also uh, beats uh, rapid jab. You can shield uh, the rapid jab and then actually get like an F smash uh, for it, for example. Probably more follow ups as well, but. Yeah, jab very very bad in this matchup because of that. A little bit like how Bowser's super armor. Uh, there we have Bowser. Bowser's super armor can just like eat up the jab. But yeah, interesting character for sure. Uh, what other evenish matchups do we have? Uh, Fox, Fox feels pretty even. Uh, this one could actually go in like either of these three tiers. Uh, but I feel like even, e even for now, even for now, I could see both. Uh, probably more likely putting him slightly losing than slightly winning. Uh, but for now, I put Fox in even. Uh, Fox more so than arguably any character in the game can really push Inklings weaker out of shield game really fast good frame data uh being in shield sucks against this character inkling is also not amazing to get down from being above in my experience and fox being amazing uh at capitalizing when you have uh characters characters uh, when fox is below the character i mean uh so that's very good for sure uh i know this matchup was talked about early on as fox advantage but i think i think uh, people are gonna get better and better with edge guarding too i did get to play against the best foxes at summit a lot i played against uh, uh light cd and larry and overall it feels pretty even and edge guarding can be pushed much more in this matchup for sure very small window for upper upper though so you need to have edge guarding slash ledge trapping on point because it's very rare very rare that you're ever gonna get up for up air unless you stand on a platform maybe uh, also like your up throw, up throw combos overall doesn't work as good against fox as many other characters because he's so so light but yeah overall overall evenish matchup i feel like pichu pichu is even as well uh they're both just amazing characters all around. And I feel like most areas in this matchup is like close to, you know, even. Neutral feels pretty even. Uh, being off stage feels pretty even. Uh, punishes, I would say, stronger for Pichu, but Pichu also dies earlier. So it kind of evens out. 
Uh, Offer Upper is pretty small in this matchup, and the fact that Pichu can out damage or like put damage uh, on yourself to get out of Upper Upper percentage, uh, I feel like that will be used in the future. Because if you have no rage, you die between 89 and 94 on FD and uh, stages with the same ceiling height uh, as FD. So if you are a Pichu and you're like, oh, I have like 91%, it's just for the best to like spam, like neutral beast and stuff, get out of that range. So Inkling can't up for upper anymore. Uh, it's going to make killing a little bit harder in the matchup. Uh, but yeah, overall, overall feels even. Same thing with Pikachu. Uh, like I know Pikachu and Pichu, they're quite different, but a lot of similarities as well. Uh, neutral game against the characters are pretty similar. Uh, having them off stage is pretty similar. Pikachu lives a bit longer, kills later. Uh, you still need to be like careful off stage with like downers and stuff like that. Uh, so yeah, overall also feels feels even. Uh, think Lucina is even too. This is a debated matchup. Some people I've talked with think Inkling wins, and then people like MK Leo, for example, think Lucina wins. Also, a matchup I could see in any of these tiers, but for now, I'll put it even. Uh, I think. I think Inkling have stronger true punishes on average. Uh, I think Lucina have better advantage state on average. I think it, Lucina have surprisingly okay edge guarding, uh, taking into consideration of how good recovery Inkling does have. You can actually get edge guards sometimes, like every now and then. So that's pretty big. Lucina is also more tricky to edge guard for Inkling than by far most characters in the game. Uh, so that's pretty good too. Uh, yeah, overall, overall feels very even-ish, even-ish to me. Uh, but as I said, against uh, many sword characters, important to learn uh, with punishes because Inkling do have potential with, with punishing when uh, Lucina comes down with like a fair and stuff. Uh, tricky timing, but can be done. Uh, slightly losing. I haven't played this matchup too much, but when I have, I feel like Yoshi actually probably have a slight, slight advantage. You can never up for upper Yoshi due to uh, his uh, double jump. Uh, so killing in this matchup, Yoshi is relatively heavy too. Uh, so killing in this matchup can be a big pain in the ass. Uh, a lot of combos doesn't work as well either due to his uh, double jump, I feel like. Besides those things, I feel like it's pretty even, but many, many stocks will snowball into not killing Yoshi, uh, which is very, very rough. Uh, so I'll, I, I see this matchup currently uh, as Yoshi having a slight advantage, but I would like to play it more. I would like to play it more. Uh, I also do think uh, Pokemon Trainer have slight, slight advantage. Uh, Charizard are bad. He's bad, but he's not really going to play the matchup much. I feel like Squirtle in the areas he is playing is probably even-ish. Uh, his puni Squirtle's punishes, I feel like, on average, actually gives more than Inklings. Uh, assuming you don't get like a perfect position for like platforms. Uh, but on many stages, that's not going to be the case. And on many stages, platforms are relatively, you know, uh, small. So you can DI in a different direction to not get hit of it. Uh, many many uh, combos slash kill opportunities, you can swap Pokemon. Like, when upper upper kills Squirtle, you can swap to Ivysaur. And even if you read the swap, the upper is not going to kill Ivysaur. And when upper upper kills Ivysaur, even if you read the swap, uh, then you're switching to Charizard, and then you still survive. So it's like, you always get to survive longer. Uh, Ivysaur have a lot, like, a lot of tricky... Uh, a lot of tricky DI mix-ups where you can die surprisingly early, since upper upper never works really to get a kill. Uh, it's a little bit like Yoshi, where stocks can snowball into not killing a lot. 
Uh, I feel like Ivysaur, just like Squirtle, does perfectly fine. Uh, good range, uh, hard to get in against him. Uh, great hitboxes to combat with Inkling. Uh, and since Inkling, as we talked a little bit about Fox, where Inkling is kind of bad to get down, uh, Ivysaur is a little bit like Fox in that area where he's very good at like keeping people in disadvantage. Uh, so for now, for now, I see Pokemon Trainer as slightly, slightly losing. Uh, hmm. What else? Losing matchups, losing matchups. Uh, actually, we can put this here. Uh, I feel like Wario is a losing matchup. Uh, I have gotten a lot better at this matchup. I've gotten a lot better at this matchup, but I still feel like it's losing. Uh, this is also a matchup where killing is annoying, really annoying. Super small window for up for up airs. Uh, yeah, super small window for up for up airs. Uh, that fucking fart kills so, so early. Uh, they both have strong punishes on each other. Wario surprisingly good edge cards against Inkling uh, due to his downer. A little bit like Palutena where falling down with Nair with Palutena is falling down downer with Wario. Uh, Gluton is incredibly good at edge guarding uh, with Wario in this matchup. And he can get actually a lot better at it as well. But he, he is already very good at it. Uh, main difference between the characters in this matchup is Wario kills much earlier. Uh, kills much earlier. Even without the fart, he kills much earlier. And if you get one, one fart, it's like, it's not game over, but it's a clear, clear disadvantage. Uh, so, overall, I would say losing matchup. Not unwinnable by any means, but I feel like Inkling is working from behind in this one. And unless Glutony have changed his mind, uh, he did agree at Summit when I asked him what he thinks about the matchup. Uh, so yeah, we'll see, we'll see. Sakurai also picked up Wario for Inkling. Uh, so every time I played with Sakurai at Summit, he pretty much always played Wario instead of Wolf. And I can see why, because I think Wolf loses while Wario does win. Uh, Peach, I would say also a losing matchup for Inkling. Kinda small up for upper percentage, but still quite a bit bigger than Wario's. You get out punished by Peach. Uh, she has one of the better edge cards against Inkling where you can kind of float by the ledge. And since Inkling doesn't have an, uh, an hitbox on the up B after the initial splash, so you, you do the up B, right? And the splash happens and you take off and then you don't have any hitbox on the up B until you land on the stage. So Peach can kind of like sit by the ledge and you just throw out, throw out attacks. Uh, uh, also float in this matchup if you float by the ground you actually can't hit roller so a lot of times with peach you can like float nair and you stay in the float to make sure you don't get rollered uh so killing in this matchup is rough you do get out punished uh like peach have stronger punishes on inkling better damage output in the matchup so yeah this feels like a losing matchup for sure um also olimar olimar feels like a, a losing matchup uh also struggling with killing uh up proper i feel like never ever works pretty much uh so that's a huge thing uh also a little bit like peach great great uh damage output uh i don't really see what inkling have over olimar in this matchup uh like, I feel like Olimar does everything or close to everything better. You can edge card him a bit though, but that's that's about it. Besides that, I don't really think Inkling have anything over Olimar in the matchup. Uh, it, it's yeah, it's one of the few matchups where I play and I feel like yeah, th this is losing. Not hopeless by any means, but it does feel like a losing matchup.
what else? Do we want to rank some of the other characters? I know Cosmos says Rob is a losing matchup, but I haven't played against Rob enough to act. I have. I'm not even sure if I've ever played against Rob. Maybe like five matches, five matches ever. Uh, Falco, Falco, I've played against a bit, and yeah, that, that feels winning actually. That feels winning. Uh, doesn't really have the strengths of Fox of like being super good at keeping you in shield, keeping you in disadvantage. He's still a solid character, but he does have many like similar issues to Fox while he doesn't get the same good strengths Fox have against Inkling. So Falco Falco should be a winning matchup. Haven't played it too much, but I'll I'll put him there. Duck count also feels winning matchup. Really annoying, really annoying. Uh campy character, but yeah, I, I don't really see what he has to make the matchup like better than, you know, a winning matchup. You still die pretty early. Kinda kinda weak recovery. You can protect yourself with a can decently well sometimes. Uh but overall, I, I think it's like an issue of the character being uh a lot worse. Uh, the other matchups I don't know if I have really played enough. Yeah, I don't think the other matchups I actually have played enough to really say anything. I have played I played a little bit against Ken and it feels like a winning matchup, but it's hard to say by how much. Same thing with Sheik. Like of these characters that are left of the characters that are left I guess I can put like all of these actually down there since we ranked trainer already. Um, but the, of, the, of the rest of the characters here, every matchup here feels like they're probably, probably gonna be a winning matchup. Maybe Pac-Man actually, I, I'm not sure of, but most of these characters, it's just like quite a lot worse characters than, than Inkling. Uh, I don't know. I don't feel confident enough to rank these characters, though. I know people want want me to rank every character, uh, but I feel like it would be just be like me, randomly talking about stuff, just to like try to fill up shit, you know. Uh, yeah, I feel like these matchups I haven't played enough to really, really justify uh, a place on the matchup chart for future ones. Hopefully, hopefully, I've played the matchup more and can accurately according to my own opinion you know uh, put them on the list so yeah this uh this is gonna be my first inkling matchup chart uh probably some surprises a lot of the stuff is probably you know a bit to be expected as well uh but this is yeah my my first matchup chart and yeah looking over it Feels pretty reasonable, feels pretty reasonable. Uh, and as I said, I think Inkling is uh, top five in the game currently. And I feel like the matchup chart kind of represents that pretty well as well. Currently, I think five losing matchups, two, three losing and two slightly losing, and then five even, and then everything else is slightly winning, winning, or clearly winning. And as I said, all the unranked all the unranked matchups, I think all of these, besides maybe Pac-Man, uh, are winning as well. Pac-Man might not necessarily be like even or losing, but it's the only character I see like actually could be like maybe a bit trickier than I think, uh, at least currently. But yeah, that's gonna be it for the matchup chart. I hope all of you guys enjoyed it. And now is the time to ask questions. Uh, let me know what you guys think about all of this.